everybody, what's up? It's today, Thursday, the 21st, 2021. January, of course. I decided to make a new video today. Um, it's been about a week since the last one, and if you've noticed, there wasn't a video for Persona 4 Golden this week. And that was done intentionally, as I have a couple of other things going on, and I have a couple of bigger projects that I've been working on towards getting out on this channel. One of them is Fire Emblem based, an OC of mine I suppose will be making an appearance. And the other is, well, I've always wanted to do a video essay proper. So I guess you'll see my first attempt at something like that. This channel we are currently listening to is called Lo-Fi Cities, and as of right now, as of recording this, this video has 153 views, and Lo-Fi Cities has 32 subscribers. I threw a like on this one especially, this is their Animal Crossing hit hip-hop mix. I have no idea if this is their music, but if it is, it's kind of a sin that they only have 32 subs. Because <laughs> this is some banger stuff, and they have a lot more on their channel. The channel is over a year old as well. So I guess that was my obligatory shout-out to Lo-Fi Cities. Now, do a little bit of retcon work on what happened last week. Well, with the whole creepy produce drama and everything that was going on, I decided to make a video, uh, the last one on my channel, which has the highest amount of views I think I've gotten on any of them. Now, there are a few, th few reasons why I think this. Um, I used a lot of tags that I wouldn't normally use, a lot of trending tags. And I also used kind of a, uh, what's the word for it? Flashy title, um, bit clickbaity, all caps, all that. And if you'll notice, um, anybody that has watched that video would see that there's nothing else really on my channel like that. Now, if you're watching this straight after that video, I would like to say welcome to my actual channel. I don't normally cover things of that nature. Um, however, I do feel, I did feel a little bit um, shaken up by the fact that Creepy Produce of all people had done the things he's done. It just, it came as a shock to me, and I couldn't really conceivably accept that, I suppose. Not without defining the terms in front of me, and and seeing every angle I could take, take the whole situation at. Because I think it's wrong to just um, say, oh, this guy's a pedophile. This guy's, um, he's grooming. This, the, and the other thing. Without properly acknowledging what those terms mean. I just very much dislike witch hunting. Um, I think it's very, very toxic, and it leads straight to McCarthyism. If you don't know what McCarthyism is, it is a thing that happened, uh, it's kind of a phenomenon that occurred in the Cold War and the years after, in America especially. It's called the Red Scare. During this time, you could be labeled a communist and without any kind of proof, you would be socially outcast and quite possibly even law and order would be inflicted upon you as we were very scared of the Red Menace, communism, 
as a whole. I think a lot of that kind of behavior goes on online, especially. Especially on YouTube and Twitch and... It's hard to really understand why. I think part of that is because of the way that the internet is. The fact that we are allowed to say anything anonymously. It makes some people and it ruins others. Which I suppose is fine in and of itself, as long as you understand how it works. If you can play it right, and you can make money off of it, absolutely do it. I don't think I'll ever be making money off of anything like this, but... These are fun to make, even if they are simple. Like, look, the Nook Twins are just sitting there smiling, looking at me. I mean, they're not smiling, they don't have a mouth, but they're definitely happy. That makes me happy. As I was saying, however, the last video got a lot of views because of that, and I wanted to make it clear to anybody that has watched that and then is moving over to here or to any other videos in my platform. I don't make videos like that very often. The reason why I titled it the way I did is because that is sensitive content. I don't want, um, it's very, very sensitive. It's not, it's not something I want, um, anybody just clicking on if they are in a more, uh, low mental state. If they're experiencing a low, I don't want them to click on a video like that. And I will try and find a way in the future, without being so clickbaity, to highlight that. Because there are some videos that are a bit more, um, that are of sensitive topics and things of that nature that I will eventually be covering, and some people just are not mentally fit to watch a video like that, especially considering how my channel is. Oh, you can hear the dog over there. Especially how my channel is. Um, because of the type of videos that I make. They're very relaxed, they're very chill. I don't want somebody that goes from one of those straight into something like that, where I'm talking about things like pedophilia and grooming. I don't want that to be... That would be a bit jarring, you know? I don't want something like that to happen. People also probably assumed with that kind of video that I would be covering the drama like some kind of Keemstar or drama alert guy, but no, um, I'm not a news channel, and I will never try and do news stuff like that. Um, maybe once or twice, but that's not something that I'm really into. If I'm going to talk news, it's going to be something that is happening to me currently. Or something that is affecting the greater internet slash political slash global um, world. So if you if you were kind of clickbaited into that, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, I I didn't expect the video to get as many as many views as it did. My video, especially that one, was a lot more of me coming to terms with what actually happened in a video format, me trying to understand, me trying to understand the entire situation and everything that aligns itself with situations like that. <coughs> Turn this down just a little bit more, this is a bit loud. Hopefully you can hear me well. I'm sorry if that was a little bit too loud, hopefully that's fine. I guess I'll find out later. Speaking of news topics, I, uh... My grandmother's cancer's gotten worse. Significantly. So next week, in the next week, I'm taking a trip all the way back to Wisconsin, back to where I grew up. 
to hopefully spend some time with her. Death is a frightening thing when when it's a loved one that dies. I'm not scared of dying myself, but I'm scared of losing people like that. It's very intimidating. It's very, very frightening. I'm scared of trying to understand how my family feels, and I've never been good at doing that. Maybe I'm actually scared of a lot of things. I think I probably am scared of a lot more than I would like to admit to. I think a lot of people are like that though. A lot of people are scared of a lot of things that they either don't quite understand or... They're scared of things they don't want to admit to and then they... Eventually wind up facing that fear in a... Violent and gruesome kind of way. <clears throat> I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to... I don't want to face my fears scared and losing my mind. I want to face them head on. I want to have the courage to move forward, no matter the cost. I want to have the courage to understand the cost. So I bought my first plane ticket, I guess, just today, um, for that trip. I've never bought a plane ticket before, so I guess, I guess we'll find out how that goes. This is kind of a early warning that a video will probably not come out during that time, unless my video essay is done by then, but I doubt that I will do that within this week. As there's, I've, all I've really done is start a rough draft of a script, not even formatted it. And there's still a lot of other things I need to really take into consideration for that. Much more than a two-hour lazy rough draft will cover. I'll try and get some work done during that week, though. So you can get those videos out. Or you can see those videos as early as I get them. One of them will most certainly be out by the end of February. I am shooting for the 17th to have one of those two videos out. I'm not certain which one yet, as my workflow is very much whatever I'm in the mood for. And I think that's part of just my personality. Um, I'm a logician in the INFP. If you've never done, like, a Myers-Briggs personality test, I would recommend doing it. 16 Personalities is a wonderful website. Just take a test and kind of learn a little bit more about yourself. It turns out I am very much a logician. I am, upon reading all the information about it, it is my personality to pretty much a T. Well, I guess to an F. My workflow is very much, whenever I am interested in something, I will put a lot of effort into it. But as soon as that interest leaves, I will just stop even thinking about it entirely. It's kind of an unfortunate thing that I have, and I, I, I'm trying to work on it. I'm trying to be more consistent in doing my work, and even playing games. I, I start a lot of things, and I just never finish them. And it's not that I have no intention to finish them, I just lose interest or I develop interest in something else that starts to change my views on things and I just can't find the time anymore to take up whatever the old thing was. It 
It seems a bit silly, but that's just the way it is. <clears throat> Another big thing with my personality is that I don't understand emotion. Which is very much true. I don't understand my own emotion, and I don't. I certainly don't understand the emotions of other people. When people get emotional, I have no idea what to say. When I get emotional, I have no idea what to say. I always think of Kaiki Deshu from Monogatari telling me to question myself, to doubt myself. My own thoughts are not my own. They're lies. The words I spit out are never true entirely. And that's a bit of a intimidating thought. It's very daunting to kind of acknowledge that my own thoughts are likely wrong. They are likely misinformation spread by myself and my own bias. It's a bit of a scary thing. But it's not altogether bad. I'm kind of glad I am that way. As it, it makes me it makes me feel a little bit better to know that if I'm wrong all the time, that means that there's more for me to learn. That means that there's more for me to improve on. It's scary to acknowledge that while my own thoughts may not be my own, it's important to understand that I am still the one having them. That qualia, that experience is still very much my own. It is something that it, only I can experience, even if they are lies. Even if all of my relationships ended up as lies, they would still be valid to me. They would still be important. They still are important to me. The mere lack of truth does not indicate an insignificance or a lack of value. It means that I don't know everything. It's humbling. I wish I could live on the Animal Crossing Island. Or in the town from New Leaf. As that's what I spent most of my time playing the series on. Life would be a lot simpler. Not having to worry about things like keeping a roof over my head. Idly fishing away in my days. Talking with people with whom I cared for and liked to spend time with. It's a fantasy, but... Well, that's what games are for, right? draw us into a fantasy, to draw us into something else, something that isn't real. Not that they're lies, but... 
merely different versions of the truth, merely different angles with which to look at things. I feel the same way about anime, it, and most of TV as well. It's not exclusive to anime, I mean, there's plenty of other shows out there that, shows and movies especially, that just take you away into a magical world or take you out of your world, take you out of reality, they take you into some place that is far beyond what we can imagine. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, for example. Hopefully this has been a bit more of a relaxing video for you. I like to think that my voice is somewhat soothing, and that people like to listen to my voice even if I'm not saying anything that interesting. As most of the time, I don't think I am saying anything that interesting. I just kind of talk into a mic, I just kind of pretend that I'm not alone. Loneliness is one of those things that is purely subjective. If you feel like you're alone, you are. It can have major detrimental effects on your health. And it can even lead you into a life of complete solidarity where you long for other people, but even if you wanted to, you could never actually reach out to them. I suppose that's something else that I'm kind of scared of. <laughs> Not kind of, I'm very, very afraid of ending up alone. In our current world, we have so much going on that I don't think it's even possible for me to be 100% completely alone and that there will always be other human beings, but Just because I'm surrounded by people doesn't mean that I'm not still alone. Just because I go to work and do customer service doesn't mean that I'm not still alone. Just because I'm here talking to you doesn't mean that I'm still alone. It doesn't mean that I'm not still alone. <sighs> no, am I stumbling over my words? Loneliness is frightening. It's very, very frightening. I don't know if I feel alone, though. I do sometimes. I do, I think, most of the time. I don't really feel much of anything. Which leads me to think that maybe... Maybe I'm already so used to being alone that... I'm just used to, I'm just numb to whatever the feeling actually is. I might just be numb to loneliness. It might just be so ingrained into me. That's a scary thought. More people today are alone than ever. More people today are depressed than ever. More people suffer with anxiety than at any other point in time. I 
I wonder why there is so much mental mental problems. I wonder why there's so many mental problems. Why there's so, like this cloud above people today that just hovers there and determines if they're going to be happy or not for them. Oftentimes it rains. Oftentimes that cloud sits right on top of us and obscures our vision and makes it hard to breathe and strangles us. But sometimes the cloud goes away and the sunshine can shine through. During those times, I think, we need to be most grateful for what we have, and we need to be most thankful for the people in our lives. Life is no easy game. Life is difficult and it's unfair. And it gives us responsibilities and challenges that most of us should never have to actually have. Most of us should never actually have to encounter. The Gen Zs are kind of in this awkward place now. We've grown up with the internet and a lot of it a lot of is expected of us. A lot is expected of our generation and we don't have the mental well-being to handle everything, I don't think. Not unless we get our act together. I have no idea how to do that. I don't don't come to me asking me how to fix problems like global warming and world hunger. I, I don't even know where to start. But... But I'll be there, I think, when I see these things, when I see these things happen and I will be able to properly analyze what the actual problem is and how to actually solve the problem, whatever that problem may be. I'll support people that are smarter than me and are more capable of me in every way possible. The only way I can really do that right now is by offering my own advice and my own philosophies the things that I have learned. My own ideals. My counsel is all that I have. I am neither a gifted musician nor a gifted filmographer, nor a gifted editor, nor am I particularly good at any game or any kind of field of mechanical pursuit. I am no great scientist. Hell, I'm not even a great philosopher. None of my ideas are grand or break the mold. None of what I say is particularly unique to anybody else or to me. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay not to be that vastly different from anybody else. I think it's okay to 
revel in my own things and to offer the advice that I can from my own experiences and my own life. My own biased perspective might be something that other people could look at and could take into consideration. If my own biased perspective helps at least one person, then I've done something right. Then all of this, my entire channel, everything that I've ever done, has been worth it. If I can save one person, if I can save one person, then everything will not be for naught. Much like Kiritsugu from Fate Zero. I used to think that saving everybody was the best way. It was the only way to move forward, to try and save as many people as I possibly could with whatever means I had before me. But that's so silly. I can't save even one person that I want to save. I can't even save myself. My entire life is going to be dedicated to saving one person. It doesn't matter who, anybody. If I can save anybody from themselves or from the trauma in their lives, then it, it's all worth it. If my council can stop a conflict before it ever happens, then everything that my life has ever been has been worth it. All the pain, all the misery, all the hardship. And if I can save one person, then I might be able to save another. If I can save two people, I might be able to save three. I wouldn't be constantly trying to help and save other people from themselves and from the hardships in their lives. I need to make sure I take it slow though. I need to make sure I don't get in harm's way myself trying to help others. I need to make sure that while I'm helping others, I'm still not damaging myself. Because people around me are hurt when I am hurting. If there's one thing that Hiratsuka Sensei from Big Iru made very clear to Hikigaya, it was that his methods were violent. They were not they were not ideal. He would always hurt himself while trying to help other people, and that in turn would hurt the people around him, the people that loved him. The people that cared for him. And I don't want to hurt those people. So I need to make sure that I help myself. I need to make sure that I solve problems in a way that does not bring misfortune upon myself and upon other people around me. Because if I save one person and another person gets hurt, then I didn't really save anybody. Even if I get hurt, I didn't really save anybody. I think that'll do it for me today, though. I think, I think this is a good enough video. It's been about 35 minutes, which is longer than I even intended. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Hopefully, if you've come here after the Creepy Produce video, or the last video that I had up, then you'll stick around and you'll see and listen to the other things I have to say and see the other things that I will do. If you've been around for a while, then I thank you for supporting me. And I hope that 
you continue to support me as best as you can. As I will try and lift up the people that watch these videos as much as I can. Thank you, and have a wonderful rest of your night. Goodbye.